Hi, Brian McCormick here from FHO Racing, uh, British Superbike and Road Race Rider. I'm here to meet Kieran, a long-time sponsor from Megabikes. So um, I'm going to have a quick chat in the office and see how things go. Welcome to Megabikes. Today we're talking to Brian McCormick, Irish Superbike Rider, TT Rider, Northwest Rider. Hi, Brian. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me again. Tell us uh, a bit of an introduction to yourself first. Basically, I was a long-time short circuit rider and then kind of turned road, roads in 2010 and kind of haven't looked back from that since. And so we've kind of mixed and matched in roads and short circuits, but we're lucky enough to be Irish champion a couple of times in short circuits. And then we've done quite well at the roads, a couple of top tens, and then and then be the fastest Irish man ever around the TT was, was a big thing the last few years. So everything's going in the right direction for me at the moment. Getting on an age, but I seem to be getting faster as the older I get, so it's, it's good at the moment. But. Less is more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Tell us what got you into bikes in the first place. Well, there was always people around me that were into bikes when I was a kid, um, like some Morris Coyley and Hilton Hinks and all them around from where I'm from. So Hilton actually was going out with my sister for a long time and I started going racing, watching motocross of him as a young age, young age. And then about 12, 13, I started going with him racing to England to the British Championship. And I kind of learned to, what to do around the paddock up until I was about 16 and then decided to uh, rob a credit union and go do it myself. So. It, um, I've been always around motorsport and always around bikes, not from my family side of things, but from outside influences. But uh, So yeah, it, is, it was kind of always something I wanted to do and as I said, once I robbed the credit union and got going, um, there was no looking back since. And what was your first bike? Do you remember? My first ever bike was a KX125, a 1989 KX125. I did two races on it. I think I blew it up in Clan Roach at a grass track. And then, as I said, went to the credit union then and, and got a YZ125 and it was man Yamaha has actually motocross ever since then. And then my first race bike was a CBR 600. So, jumped into the event. CBR 600 down Mandela Park, no doubt. Yep, CBR 600 in Mandela. My first year of racing, I actually got a wild card for the British Super Bikes in Mandela. I was only like three races into my racing career, as they say, and uh, straight into the British Super Bikes. So it was, uh, it was a bit of an eye opener, but um, it was a good way to kind of learn and get going. But that was my first year of racing, it was on 03, 04, 03. It was my first year of racing, yeah. So straight into the British Superbikes in Mandela, which they were there for three years. They were. Yeah. I've never seen so many people in Mandela as when the British Superbikes were on there and the atmosphere and the, just the fun, the crowds, the colours. Actually, we actually, back in the day, gave uh, John Reynolds and the Japanese rider, I can't remember his Kagiyama. name. Kagiyama. a loan of our some road GSXR thousands for them to go out and learn the track on. I remember I was there that track day, actually, yeah. But uh, yeah, good time. So your CBR 600, where, where did you go from there? What happened after that? Did it? Um, that was it then, the bug is, was in then. And after, it was two years, 2003 and four on the CBR 600. And then it was a GSXR 1000. But I'd gone to America and done a few races out and out there as well. So I was riding a Yamaha R6 out there as well. So I was kind of doing a lot from when I started off. So good, some good opportunities out in America. Unfortunately, didn't kind of work out at the time, but uh, I was very eager. Maybe I was too eager to get the British Championship before I learned too much. So we kind of did a couple of years in the Irish Championship, British Super, or Irish Superbikes then in 04, 05, and then decided I had to go to BSB and did a few super stock rounds and stuff. But um, and came back then 07, kind of won everything here in 07 and 08. So. Then decided to do a few of the roads as it was so expensive to go to England. So you get a bit of help to do the roads. So I kind of said I'd give it a go and see. And it's kind of since then it's kind of snowballed. But um, yeah, my own bikes here. It's it was hard at the start because yeah, obviously apart from I think you've sponsored me since I started going in you know four. I think was the first time I got a set of letters or something off you. So it's a, <laughs> it's a long time ago. But then every year since. So I was grateful for that. But it was it was hard to get anywhere back then from here to England, money-wise, especially from where I am, unless I have a horse or a Hurley, no one really cared about, about, about sport down around me, motorsport anyway, so. And then when you go to, when you go to the British Championship, like, and you see the setup and yeah. you see the money involved, like, and you see some guy kind of nearly pushing his bike around at the end of the field, but he has the biggest, yeah. biggest truck in the paddock and the biggest checkbook. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating. It's quite disheartening, like, I can imagine. I remember we went to around Mallory Park or something, I think, and they actually wouldn't let my van into the paddock. It was so bad. I pulled up in the <laughs> out of smoke and he said, no, we have standards here. Now they'll bring the budget yet. I was finishing mid-pack in Superstock beating lads who had 40 foot trucks and stuff like that but they wouldn't let me in because of my van <laughs> so yeah there's a bit of um there's a bit of that over there but I said I've been there I've been there since I was a young kid or so I was kind of so eager to get there I was maybe too eager um but it was uh, it was an experience going over and back anyway yeah well look it's all it's all learning anyway yeah, yeah, it's all part of it. I mean, so it's uh, and you kind of when you go over 
you know, to a new championship where it's really competitive, you know, you do tend to get dragged along, you know, and your speed yeah, kind of slowly, slowly grows. It shows when it came back here then, because in, 06, in 07, I think it was, we won nearly everything that year and on a bike that probably wasn't the most competitive as well. So it showed what you learn over there to, to and, and especially even last year, um, the pace that everyone is at over there is crazy, you know. So it's um, it's just unfortunate that the bridge is very big for young riders who are here to get over there. And it takes a lot of money and because we have so much talent over here, we're going to see more of them over there. Yeah, that's it. it. It is hard and it's hard to, for young riders to kind of get that kickstart that they need. It is very difficult here. So then the roads, what was it about the roads? What attracted you to the roads? Um, I've always had an interest in the TT Northwest and Ulster because of the whole the the big persona of them and the history of them. especially the TT I was always a big fan of especially Joey I was I was lucky enough to meet Joey when I was young when I was a young kid I remember going to basketball for a clutch place for Hilton and things like that and I was lucky enough to meet these people and then to see what they done it was just amazing so I was always a big fan of the of the international roads but the nationals I never I was never at one uh, my first ever national road race is one I done I was <laughs> Kill Lane in 09 so. Um, it went straight from that then straight to the, the northwest, but it was just a case of uh, I was after been had a bit of bad luck in, in British Championship where um, I went to certain teams I shouldn't have went to really, and, and money was disappearing and things like that. So I, I kind of I kind of had to come back here and, and try and rebuild everything again. Rebuild and rebuild um, and start. Yeah, so we did that, but then I got kind of offers to do roads, and then all of a sudden people are offering you bikes and offering you tires, which wasn't happening in short circuits. So I said, right, I'll give it a go. Um, I said in an interview in a road race in Ireland magazine that I'd love to do the TT at some stage and then uh, Paul Phillips was on the phone then offered me some, offered me a bit of a package to come and be a newcomer TT in 2010 and we went there and haven't looked back since really, it's, it's like a drug, <laughs> I shouldn't have went a couple of years with injuries and financial reasons but we're 10 years down now and we're, we're back this year again. It's a big long course, big learning curve, mm. very little room for error, yeah. you know, does it? What does it feel like when you land there and you're going out to your first practice session, you know? Um, are you shaking in your boots or are you just excited? What is it like? Yeah, the first, like, yeah, you have these moments where you say, geez, why don't I just take up golf or why don't I do this or do that? Because why am I putting myself through this? You get that so, so nervous. But I'll be honest, I'm so comfortable around the, the Isle of Man now. If the bike is in a good, if the bike is handed, I'm so comfortable and I'm doing my own thing. I'm happy. I'm not, I don't get too nervous there. I get more nervous like some Macau or even BSB because I'm probably the oldest on the grid, <laughs> surrounded by a lot of lunatics. But I don't get too too bad at the TT now, to be fair, over the last couple of years, because I've had some good handling bikes and I've, I've just enjoyed it and I haven't put too much pressure on myself. Where this year now, we're on the, the, lucky enough to factory support a BMW, so there'll be a little bit of pressure, but not from the team, mostly from myself. But uh, you'll always have nerves. If you don't have nerves, you wouldn't be alive, to be honest. This year will probably be your first year at the TT with a full factory effort behind you, you know, mechanics, team, everything, you know what I mean? So what's going to be different about that? Like, is it, you know, you know when you're used to working in small teams and a small setup, like, is it, is it going to take the good out of it or you're going to just use the positive end of it? Like, what I, is it? I'd say if I was going to another team like Honda or Suzuki or someone I didn't know and I was going straight into a factory setup, I'd go, oh, geez, it's very daunting and I feel the pressure and... Uh, it wouldn't feel as comfortable as what I've done because I've always had just a group of mates around me helping me. Whereas this team I've been with now two years and we all go on holidays together. We all socialize together. We, we, we know each other so well and we're all like a big group, big family like. So there's no pressure that way. And I think I'm more relaxed going into it. And I'm more relaxed in the, in the sense that I don't have to worry about my tires. I don't have to worry about my bikes. I don't have to worry about getting stuff there, which I always, always have to organize myself, everything from nothing bowls to ferries, you know what I mean? Everything I had to do myself for now, that's taken out of my hands, which I'm more relaxed, I can kind of concentrate on myself and, and it might work, it might not, I don't know. So sometimes doing everything yourself and being the underdog is a, big, is a good thing too, but at this stage, I think with the experience they have and after winning TTs and on this bike as well, this model of a bike, I, I can't see why you can't be a good thing. Like, so. Happy days, well look, we're happy to see you out there. Are you back in BSB? Yeah, we're back in, we're going to do BSB Superstock this year. Just to basically get up the speed for Northwest and TT. I'll do some stuff here in Ireland as well, and probably maybe throw in the Masters or two, if we get time. Um, I'm only going to do selector around the British Championship, because we're going over and back, and the schedule has been so busy with the internationals. You're away for a long time. I have to work as well at some stage, so it's hard to do everything, but I think my days of doing full season to BSB are gone. Um, I'm just going to pick and choose the ones I like, and thanks to the team to let me do that. 
but we might throw in a national road over here maybe for heen or something local just for a bit of fun but yeah i think we're our plates quite quite full we're looking at other because if the ulster grand prix doesn't go ahead we're looking at maybe a matra or somewhere over in finland do some something different so and hopefully maybe go back to daytona in october so it's going to be a busy enough year so we also have an Aprilia 660, which I'm really enjoy uh, looking forward to riding. Yeah, interesting challenge, won't it? You know, yeah, yeah. New bike, completely new to you. Yeah, I'd I've, say there'd be a few of them on the on the starting grid as well. Yeah, they seem to be very popular and they've done very well. The whole grid was nearly full of them in Daytona last week, so it's um, it's going to be new for me because I haven't ridden twins before. So it's it's just, but I want to be in every class at the TT to get as much time as I can. So we have a 600 sorted and we have the new Aprilia, so I'm, I'm delighted to be on that. And I know. As you sell them yourself and they're, they're cracking little bikes so looking forward to getting out on that as well fitness how's the training going training's going oh yeah i i was supposed to get an operation unfortunately on my elbow and but it, the operation on my elbow turned into an operation on my neck so i'm kind of leaving that off because it would mean i'd be out for most of the season so we're kind of working on ways to get around that um i was having little issues last year with with, with nerve damage in my arm but it turns out it's coming from my spine but since that, we've kind of got found a way to train around it and, and do things. I'm doing a lot of cycling, a lot of mountain biking and, and stuff. Um, I still have a bit of timber to lose, uh, keeping the old Christmas weight on a bit too long maybe, but we have a long way to go before the international start. Um, so we've got, thanks to yourself, I have a nice motocross bike there as well to use training away. So get out on that as much as I can now. And I find that the kind of best thing to do, to be honest, once you don't get yourself injured. Um, but no, we're, I'm, I've kind of a good routine now where I'm in the gym once a week, once, once a day and I'm with my trainer three or four times a week, so it's, it's going well. It's getting harder the older I get, but it's, uh, it's going well at the moment, Jim. I kind of find it easier to focus on it though, you know, the yeah. older you get where you have less distractions, you know, going on. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. Yeah, I'm very settled in, in everything at home as, with that kind of stuff as well. I have no distractions that way as well, so I'm, I'm kind of lucky enough. Um, I said family business as well, so I can kind of do what i want to do it as well so it's uh it's good and um, bike fitness is actually quite good we've been out testing already so i've put in some long kind of laps on on bikes in Maria and cartagena and andalusia so bike fitness is there i just want to kind of get as lucky as i can to be to make because lads are spending a fortune trying to make the bike light and so i might as well do a little bit of work as well absolutely well we were talking to uh jack recently and he was saying the same thing last year in the kawasaki yeah. he lost two and a half kilos at the end of the season to make the difference yeah couldn't make the bike go any faster or any lighter so these are the things you have to do sometimes yeah very important the 600 so the super, super bike now my super bike is 230 brake horsepower so i don't think it's not as as important but um yeah definitely it's it helps and you'll be at the northwest yeah i've been at the northwest since 2012 2013 was cancelled because of the weather so it's going to be kind of i won't be won't be going back to learn as a newcomer but it's um it's going to be kind of daunting because these lads have been at that pace for a few years at the northwest i know there wasn't on last year but i'm looking forward to it it should be good good to get the bikes ready for the tt as well but um hopefully we can get stuck in and get get up near the front of it do you ride a bike do you ride a bike on the road yes i'm lucky enough um being ambassador for for bmw here um in ireland so i they they kind of kit me out with a nice gs every year um so i'm lucky enough to have that it's great i don't use as much as i'd like to because we're not i'm not home enough to use it but i think i only have 2,000 kilometers on the whole year but it's um it's nice to be able to get out and go for a spin and, and kind of relax on a bike instead of having to go balls out all the time you know so it's as um it's enjoyable it's good fun so Need to get my full license sorted now, and then I'll be a bit more, a bit happier on it. Just see on your social media, you're not long back from the Texas Tornado boot camp. Yeah, it's lucky enough to I've be out there. there. <laughs> yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was good. I probably the same bruises as you have. Um, yeah, it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant experience. And Colin, as you know yourself, he's he's he is what you see on TV. He's as down to earth and go crack. Um, there's no airs or graces about him, so it was it was great fun. Um, I was trying to compete with a little twelve year old flat tracker for camp champion or whatever it was and uh, I ran out of talent too many times so a lot of bruises and bumps to show for it but yeah riding bikes all day long shooting guns and drinking beer like it's pure Texas but it was um it was a great experience and I'll be back again next year we'll hopefully get a good crew of Irish lads to get back there and show them how to drink properly. <laughs> so when you're riding the bike or training or whatever you're watching MotoGP or you're watching Superbikes? You... Yeah I'm, a, I'm an addict I'm a, I'm a big fan at the end of the day as well you know and I watch everything from if we, if we want to the last one in all, all the classes, uh, same World Superbikes, and I will be watching a lot of BSB as well, I won't be in mo some of them, but even World Rally Champ, anything, anything in motorsport, I, I'm into, but, yeah, but I, I, I'm a big golf fan as well, and a big rugby fan, so. And tell us, who's your pick now for MotoGP season this year? I'd like to see Bagnaia do it. It's, 
I think the Yamas by the looks things are the one that have they, they're struggling a little bit in the faster tracks but once you get back to Europe they'll be on top of it again you know so hopefully more I'd love to see more of Delhi do well to be honest I think he deserves a good shot at it but um yeah, I think Bagnaia are, are more bloody with my kind of favourites and Jack Miller as well, I suppose. I was lucky enough to meet him before and have a good crack with him. So and, um, it should be a good year. I can't, to be honest, I can't see anyone running away with it this year. It's gonna be, it looks like it's going to be one of them years where everybody's going to be a lot of people in the mix. Yeah, I mean, like the last GP, mm. you know, if, if it's happened to go by, like, you know, yeah, yeah. it's totally unpredictable. And we're a super bike. Um, I think Johnny I, Ray will get his title back. I'd love to see a, a good battle between them throughout the, the year, but I think Top Rack is special. He really is. He's mad to watch. He's. Uh, we loved. It'd be great to see him move on to MotoGP and not happen to what Johnny Ray, happen Johnny Ray and be stuck more super bikes too long that the opportunities are gone. You know. But it'd be great to see. And look, I think the Hondas are going to be in there as well. I think it's going to be a different year in World Super Bikes this year. I think there's going to be more as as MotoGP. There's going to be more people in the mix, and it'd be great to see because it was getting a little bit monotonous for a while with Johnny winning everything. But last year was great to watch. Then when there was battles going on, so I can I can't see anyone running away with it again. But I'd say it's going to be close. Yeah. You've got a teammate, pretty competitive in the BSB. Can he do the can he do the damage this year? I think so, to be honest. We're going by testing this year. I've never seen him as fast and we were lucky enough to be testing with, with a lot of MotoGP riders. I think there was ten or fifteen of them there. Jorge Martin, Zarco, Finales, all of them. They're all there. They're all on stockers the same as what he was on and he was quicker than them. And this is on their tracks in Spain, you know, so he's he's been he's broke the lap record in Andalusia as well. So he's been really, really riding well and last year only for bits of bad luck he would have been on the podium more but had a couple of more wins like but that's it he just needs a bit of luck there's, there's nothing lacking from him or the team I don't think it's just it's so competitive as you know over there that it just just needs a little bit of luck and I think he can have definitely have more wins and more podiums championship would be very hard over there next year so um, hopefully I'd like to see the FHO bike on the, on the top it's good for me it's good for everybody if they is so Brian, look, that's it. Thanks very much for dropping in. Thanks yes, for thank you. And the very best of luck. Thanks the very TV, much. The Northwest. Appreciate the help. Go this year. All right. Thank you. Keep it safe.